Hello everyone, welcome to Impression. So last time I brought you a three must-have mods for the 9 Bob Max scooter and promise you with the suspension episode. So today's episode is going to be the Monorim suspension V2. Uh, V2. I, I don't know. I'm going to explain how to install this and let you know whether this is worth it or not. Let's go. So one of the drawback of the 9 volt Max is the lack of suspension. That despite the long range of 60 km per charge, it is very fatiguing for your feet, knees, and back. Thankfully, the good people of Monrim has been making suspension kits available for this very popular scooter. The installation process is rather complicated, but if you follow this video along and you will be very successful of doing so anyways. So kit comes with the suspension itself, fudge tools, plus covering and screws, and the silver ring, and the shaft, and yes, I forgot to include it in the first place. The QR code for the instruction doesn't really work, and very unhelpful manual can go to trash. First thing you have to disassemble is the brake line. I used 8mm wrench and 14mm wrench, I grabbed the two nuts and twist it in a counterclockwise and you should be able to remove the small one. And for the bigger nut, you must hold the brake line tight to unlock it, otherwise it will just spin forever. And finally, there's this another nut at the top. You can simply unscrew it with the wrench again, and there's no trick on this one. Now remove the handlebar and there are three screws to remove and I use the number 5 allen key for this. And there's a power cable that's still attached to it so do not yank it please. Well let's go back to the wheel for a bit. Remove the two rubbers and reflector on the wheel to access the screw underneath the both sides. Going back to the neck, there's a one screw that's holding the entire wheel from falling, so careful when you're unscrewing it because this can happen. No! Once the wheel is back on the ground, pry open the wood covering and slide them out through the stem. Use 15mm wrench to unscrew the nuts on the plain side of the wheel. However, you may not be able to remove the brake side of the wheel, and that's normal. If you take a close look at the plain side again, you'll discover a flat spot on the thread. Use a vice grip to grab it, and use a lighter to heat up the nuts, and then you should be able to remove it very easily. I hammer down to remove the wheel from the fork, and there's a small spacer for the regular side, so be careful not to lose it. And here's a front fender. There's only one screw to remove from the original fork and you'll find the sponge-like sticker from the kit like this and this sticks in between the fender and suspension itself. As you can see here, you can screw it onto the suspension but I didn't do it because I don't think it's a very good solution to hold it and some people in the 9 community also say that the wheel can stop from hitting the fender and risking the safety. So I do not recommend putting it on together. But if you want to install the fender again, make sure to use the shoulder screw that's provided by the kit. Anyways, the wheel now can be screwed onto the suspension and make sure to use a permanent Loctite solution when you are doing it. If you go back to the neck of the scooter, you will see two black rings sitting on top of each other and we do not need it. Instead, use a silver ring that is provided by the kit. Now insert the suspension into the neck Then insert the shaft to upper neck part of the suspension, sandwiching the spacer in between. Once you've done it correctly, it should look like this. Now it's time to put the handle back to the scooter using the shoulder screw from the suspension kit as shown in the picture uh, that is one with the blue paint on. 
Okay, do not use the original screw. This will not fit. And make sure that the screw is extra tight. That's what she said. Once you've done everything correctly, there shouldn't be any movement. But if you do have a movement like this, sorry dude, you gotta do it again, okay? Now let's see this in action, shall we? So how does it perform? Although increased height means little less stability in high speed, I was impressed by the thick aluminum they used and despite the complications and chip spring they used here, uh, which you can also upgrade, it performs admirably well. However, if you're not a very handy person and do not have enough tools to figure things out, it might be a hard sell. Anyways, that's been it for today and if you made it this far, please consider subscribing and like the video. See you on the next one. Bye.